Cafe Anyway. Here we are at Cafe Anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. Somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. And the fine country of Ameritopica. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because we got lots of topicas to get to. It's Mike Matthews. Here we are at Cafe Anyway. So... I'm going to say thank you for letting me be on your show because that's what all the guests say at the beginning of every podcast. Thank you for being, having me on your show and I can't wait. That's about it, what they say usually. Mike's Daily Podcast. And we are going to be talking about things like, for example, Mike's what? Daily if you're a teenager, Podcast. you're going to have content yeah. restricted to you. Content. Now, back that term, content. That would only refer to what was inside that bottle. What are the contents of that bottle? What are the contents of your suitcase? That's what it, content used to mean. And we were content with that way of usage. Somehow, content turned into... Whatever is being fed to you Entertainment wise Infotainment wise Whatever information or Basically entertainment Entertainment is content If you think about it And you are thinking about it now I'm sure all content Is entertainment in some way It's a distraction It is escape So It has just become hip it's become the thing to do, the fad, the thing to do, the fad thing to do, the fad do is to say content. All right, now that we got that out of the way, Meta has said it will default teenage Facebook and Instagram users to the most restrictive content settings. The company faces mounting claims that its products are addictive. Well, that's true. And here's today's podcast picture. Is it anywhere near as addictive as TikTok stuff? No. The TikTok entertainment escapism, the TikTok world is bad. It just don't don't get too involved into that world. I'll tell you when I discovered so what what was addictive to me in the early days was finding Google Photos. <laughs> And I could see all the cool pictures of the late great Basil the Boxer. And there he is now barking at us going, Mike, stop looking at pictures of me. That's really creepy. But no, the... A bo- have you ever seen a dog that is of the Boxer breed? They are funny. They're always funny and running around and they seem so happy and jolly. So I guess Boxer pictures are cool. And I have had a lot of Boxer pictures on Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Should I have another one today? No, I'm going to take a, the picture from a very bizarre Friday evening in Fremont is what I'm going to use. I had a doozy of a day in Fremont on Friday. And it's weird because an ex-employee had his wedding on Friday. And uh, he was not the best employee. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> He was, he would never take any feedback. He, I was always doing his job for him in some way. He, he had COVID twice, was out for something like 800 weeks. He was always on, on vacation or trips. He'd leave early, super early in the day and say, okay, Mike, I took care of everything. Are you sure? Is it all taken care of? Yeah, Mike, it's all done. I'm going to leave. Bye. And he'd be gone. All of a sudden I'd find all this stuff that he hadn't done. Ah, Anyway, I wish him well. Cafe anyway. And he got married. So, sort of, uh, what would you call that? Yes, it was a superstitious connection. A strange coinka dink. You know, there's a real scary holiday coming up. The radio stations that he once worked for all went off the air simultaneously for two hours on Friday morning That was not a great way to wake up So I had to rush down to Fremont To help put out that fire And was there all day And as I left As the sun went down I got that cool picture And you can see it at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com 
And I will post a podcast picture of Basil. Although, if you scroll down to the bottom of mikesdailypodcast.com, there are a bunch of cool pictures of him in the gallery. And that is what happened on Friday. But what happened with Meta... This is Mike's Podcast Picnic. uh, The updates that Meta will have will default teenage users to the most restrictive settings, prevent those users from searching about certain topics... That was the name of the last podcast, Topics, and prompt them to update their Instagram privacy settings. In October, a bipartisan group of 42 attorneys general pronounced, announced, they're suing Meta, alleging that the company's products are harming teenagers. Kids and teenagers are suffering from record levels of poor mental health. And social media companies like Meta are to blame. New York Attorney General Letitia James said that. Addenda with Kevin. Meta whistleblower Arturo Behar told lawmakers that the company was aware of the harms its products caused to young users, but failed to take appropriate action to remedy the problems. I sometimes watch Bloomberg. And whenever they go to the canned footage, the pre-roll, the B-roll, whatever they call it, hey, because you know the people on the in the foreground, the people talking, the the two anchors are talking about, uh, or the the anchor and the guest, they're talking about Meta, Facebook. So suddenly there's Mark Zuckerberg on screen and some footage of him at one of his announcement events. One of the big meta events Hey, this is what we're doing He looks so quirky And all of those All of those videos for like Disney When there's a Disney announcement Hey, it's the big Disney convention Where they announce the, at, the, at the convention center They have a big room They take over a big room Or maybe it's on the Disney campus or somewhere And they take over a big theater and there at the front are all these CEOs and big mucky mucks. As we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring in Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Anyway. The last place on earth. So they're standing there up st- on stage. My 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 and they are telling, hey, this is what, what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Well, most of them have the worst uh, presence on stage. They look all confused. They don't. They're not game show hosts. They don't know what they're doing. They're not presenters, as the Brits say. The royal Trump tweet decree. I say decree. what you want about Trump, but gosh, he can just get up there. That guy hasn't had stage fright in his life ever, and just rolls off the top of his brain whatever he wants to say. That's usually about him. Always about him. And the people, though, at these. Big company events where they're promoting something Hey, Disney's gonna add this, this, and this To all these Disney parks Wow, we're all excited Oh, that's the other thing It's the fake enthusiasm They try and get up there going Yeah, yeah I'm all excited Come on, let's go Like a really bad pastor Like a bad preacher up on stage Hey, we believe in Jesus Christ Amen They just want to say amen See, that's the cool thing About being a pastor is you can always fall back on the amen question. Not amen is amen, hallelujah, but as the question mark. Like, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you awake out there? Are you? Teachers don't have that. When teachers are teaching and going, when the Civil War happened, Abraham Lincoln wrote this and said this to the people. And is anyone listening? Bueller? Bueller. So basically the amen question mark is the Bueller for pastors to see if the congregation. See, that's the, that's the other cool thing in a church, your audience, the audience is called a congregation in a classroom. The audience is a, just the class, the pupils. Mike is on it, man. man. Go with no man has gone. Before. We love it, Mike. You listen, class, class. I'm not going to do it. That was from a Cheech and Chong funny record album that they did that lots of kids bought and thought they were all cool because they knew what 
Cheech and Chong were all about. And nowadays, people are, that's so kindergarten what Cheech and Chong were all about. Because you just get on a BART train and oof. It's like Cheech and Chong were there. MTV News. You hear it first. Any car you go on, on BART, it's like Cheech and Chong were just there. And all of their movies. It's the point I'm trying to make. So what I'm saying is that when you have the, these companies doing their little introduction, they're, they're all trying to be Steve Jobs because Steve Jobs made that famous. He got up there in his sweater Woo! and he looked cool and he was announcing these amazing products. I still have my iPhone 4. It is amazing how tiny that thing is. And that was groundbreaking. Well, everything that we use now is based on that. It's amazing how smartphones have gotten bigger in size. So you have a little more room to do this and that with your screen. Because that, that screen on the iPhone 4 is so tiny. But hey, it, it, it broke down barriers. And now Apple's got, well, they just don't have the big things that they do anymore. The, the Apple Watch, that was huge. The iPad, okay. Everybody went crazy about that. And a couple other things, but... Now it's all petered out And their stock is not doing so well Or as good as it used to do Fabagoo Things to do do. Tiger Woods His 27 year partnership with Nike Came to an end 27 years Nike signed Tiger Woods in 1996 The year he turned pro He was 20 years old It was a 40 million dollar contract It was, at the time, the largest golf endorsement deal. And I remember all these old timers, all these old white guys that played golf. They were all in love with, what's his name, Arnold Palmer and everybody else. And they're like, who's this kid? And never mind the racist connotations, just they would be, Welsh on the world. You're embarrassing me, older generation. Why are you doing that? Over the course of his career, Tiger Woods made a reported $500 million from the swoosh. Every time that Woods would go four rounds, he provided Nike with $2 million to $4 million of exposure. So Nike, likey. Woods provided Nike with even more exposure. More than LeBron James. Holding court with Lady Katie. Lady Katie. You will travel into the incredible universe. Well, due to the pace of play of golf compared to basketball, he actually had more exposure than LeBron James. Golf club maker Taylor Made, which Woods has used since 2017, and Tiger is now 48. Could be a potential landing spot For the 15 time major winner Nike has been quietly ramping down On golf For years Because it has not been a huge money maker For the brand even though Tiger did make them a lot of money But golf not as much In 2016 Nike announced It would stop making golf equipment All together So you can't Go out there on the golf course and look all cool With your Nike stuff when I think of golf, I think of Larry David. Because curb your enthusiasm, they're always off on the golf course. They're on the golf course, there's a bunch of old guys, and then they eat in the clubhouse afterwards, and some shenanigans happen. It's what, what golf has been reduced to to me. And the really soft talking of the announcers. Oh, he's about to hit the ball. Oh, it's a bogey. I don't know. Joe Car insurance rates have increased almost 20% in the year. Uh, If you go back uh, from November of 2023 to November of 2022, uh, six times the rise in overall consumer prices. Six times the rise from November 2022 to November 2023. TikTok is captivated by videos from guests aboard Royal Caribbean's nine-month round-the-world cruise. The posts have 180 million views as land lovers follow along for high CT. I guess it's hashtag ultimate world cruise. Kathy's Corner. 
to Kathy's Corner. All those travel vloggers on YouTube saw tremendous spikes in viewership. I don't know how much money they're making off of it on YouTube or TikTok. I know some have moved to TikTok, though you can't do as long a video. And travel videos really need to be long to get the whole thing. You are a man. Sometimes you wear stretchy pants. This show is clean. Oh, let's go visit. Pretty much. The great the abandoned amusement park called Happy Land out in the middle of the Ozarks. Let's go. Okay, cool. And they're walking around. And you're, oh, what are they going to do next? What are they going to do next? That kind of urban, what's it called? Urban travel, urban discoverers, conquerors, something like that. Well, those videos get very addicting, addictive. And I did used to watch Carpetbagger constantly. And then I'm thinking, why am I seeing? This is one problem a lot of those guys have. Because most of those travel guys... There's a couple other ones World of Micah Adam the Woo They're not the most attractive people on the planet And they tend to like to put the camera right in their faces The camera lens right in the face I got through that I got into it (laughs) I don't want to see that weird thing happening with your tooth Please Just don't Put the camera over there Oh but my arms aren't long enough Put Just put it on a tripod and Stand off to the Be a little more professional And they shake the camera too much I really hate those travel I dropped a lot of the travel vloggers Because I was getting sick Watching their I wanted to see the places And I've learned a lot of places Like I want to go there I want to go there I want to go there And I know what to do when I get there You know I mean people You know people get stuck on stupid You know what I mean Because I saw every particular place That they showed You know go go here Go here check out that but dang, the way the camera shakes. Oh, boy. That, and, on, and when you're watching it on a flat screen, a big screen, it will definitely give you motion sickness. Oh, speaking of Apple. Coming to an Apple commercial. The one thing that Apple's got going for them is because one of the phones that flew out the door. The, 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 bo- the what do they call that door? Transmutation. Mutation. Door plug Yeah Because it wasn't really Supposed to be a door Anyway The door panel blew out Was found On the side of the road Oh An iPhone that apparently Got sucked out of the Alaska Airlines plane When the door panel blew out Was found on the side Of the road Still intact And working Even after plummeting 16,000 feet To the ground And every announcer that read that story said, And if I drop my phone off my desk, it won't work anymore. (laughs) Then get an OtterBox. What is wrong with you? (laughs) Come on. Everybody I knew had an OtterBox. And these weren't wealthy people. You just get an OtterBox. It saves you so much money. Record thunderstorms and deadly earthquakes cost $250 billion in damage. Last year they did. The number of deaths caused by natural disasters rose to 74,000 last year. Is the bottom line as they wrapped it all up. So all that came from Rob Black. I produce his podcast. His very interesting podcast talking about money. And he is on the radio on AM 1220 KDOW. Weekday mornings. And then he's on Cron Television And the 9 o'clock hour, Monday through Thursday. And that's fascinating stuff to me. Look who's here. Hi, Mark. It's me to the rodeo queen. Hi, God. (laughs) I'm on my horse tonight. And to this grown field player, tell you what. What? Benita wants a new iPhone, but I'm going to pay for it because it's too expensive. And I don't like that Mark Zuckerberg. Um, Oh, that's two different tech companies. You got two different fang stocks. Meta is Zuckerberg. Apple is um, Tim Cook and that whole thing. And I don't like Disney either. Now, I don't think Disney is in the Fang stocks. That'd be Fanged. No. Or Dang? That could be Dang stocks. Magnification. Any of those stocks, though, when the guys get up, when the CEOs get up there, when the women, men, whatever, get up there, the CEOs, and do their little spiel. Oh, it's so forced and stiff and canned. And I feel it's cringeworthy. Cringeworthy. Why are you taking, doing that company? Big, huge tech company. Why are you going that route to announce a 
new thing. Just what? It's so just geeky bad. Like if the, the geeks took over the talent show. Well, the geeks usually did take over the talent show. But let's say somebody got up there and tried to do a show like a podcast without knowing exactly what he was going to say. Wouldn't that be dumb? Oh, what am I going to say? Look who's here. Oh, Mark, I make the delicious root beer house around now. I'll punch you right in the face. Oh, Thank you. Okay. Drink around now. I'll cut you. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Let me try it. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. What's in that? I put leaves. I don't think you should put leaves in root beer. I mean, it's not leaf beer. It's root beer. But thank you for filling me in and for telling me what's happening in our beverages here at Cafe Anyway. But you can tell me what's going on with your beverages and your world and anything that springs to your mind. Thoughts? Question mark? Thoughts? Amen? Question mark? Let me know. Here's the number. Call Mike at the Cafe Anyway hotline. Area code 510 510- Two two eight four six four zero. And with more ways to reach me, it is a frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.